103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today, as usual, we have our co-host on the line, the Wombat. Hello, Wombat. They can take our lies, but they cannot take our weekly radio podcast. <laughs> They cannot do that. <laughs> and today's guests are uh, George, Red Leader, uh, Boudreaux, and Doubtfire. Welcome, Paul. Dread Pirate Higgs is on his way in, apparently. So uh, we'll get right on with it. Digital Free Thought Radio R is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Mm. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, God's holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville and has been for over 10 years? I don't want any spoilers. I just barely caught up to the first tournament arc where Naruto is about to fight Rock Lee or Sasuke or something. I don't know who's going to win, but I'm really excited to see what this ninja is going to do. I think he's going to make, I think he's going to do big things. It's going to be amazing. Not our show. Uh, The only fighting we do is uh, atheists against theists and conversationally. (laughs) Some cool stuff. No fighting. Uh, and we'll tell you how you can uh, watch that after the mid-show break as well. And if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Uh, what are we talking about today, Wombat? Oh, you asked me that question. I was asking you the question at the start of the show. Apparently, mm-hmm. you get like a bunch of free candy and money when you become an atheist and you want to talk about how much money it's like the nobel you prize here. you know yeah it's just like you are now smart <laughs> here's all the money so we're yeah. talking today about uh what life. should you expect when you become an atheist if you yeah, were to life become as an atheist, atheist. yeah life not only that atheist. what do you get out of it say you're sitting comfortable on your theist chair and you're like hey i got god on my side i got all the <clears> things that i need in my life i'm ready for some uh sweet extra stuff what do you got on the table atheism anything good anything that should attract well, you one of your the things side? is uh, you're sitting in your sweet theist chair you know yeah. god above watching everything that you do well your best friend has, a, has a plus side you know he's watching out for you right yeah absolutely. he's also watching everything you do like santa claus and every thought that you have in your head which is extra legal for santa claus <laughs> uh, you know he doesn't even do that and he's judging you and ready to uh, condemn you to an eternity of hell if you do the wrong stuff. If that even uh, exists, right? And is, is that a recipe for paranoia or what? There you go. As a matter of fact, is it not the definition of paranoia? Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some drawbacks. I want to see, though, Dread Pirate, now that you're here, you got a really big day tomorrow. I want to do just a quick roundtable how everyone's doing. Dread, you got a big day tomorrow. You mind talking about it? Are you able to communicate? Is your yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, you can hear me all right? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't able to get the YouTube thing set up. I, uh, In fact, I was running around trying to find my charger in order to be here today. So, <laughs> well, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, it was a long drive. Um, but, uh, yeah, so tomorrow I go before the Supreme Court of British Columbia mm. to uh, petition uh, the court to um, uh, order the Human Rights Tribunal to hear my case against the uh, ICBC, the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia, which is a crown corporation here. Um, they had uh, refused to take my picture wearing my wearing my tricorn. Where's right. my tricorn? Um, it's just a pirate hat. Think of a pirate hat. Yeah, it's my, yeah. Yeah, it's my pirate hat. Yeah, Not even a I'm calendar. Because i the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster in British Columbia, mm. and uh, where, as uh, members of other religions are allowed to wear religious headgear, Regalia. Uh, we have been refused. Um, uh, so anyway, that's the fight, and I'm taking that fight to court tomorrow morning. Well, Supreme nice. Court. Supreme wow. Court, yeah. So I asked you this before, what can we do to uh, help you or support you in like this endeavor? Is there anything that we can do? Well, I I think, you know, just spreading the word of pastafarianism and and that, uh, you know, we're 
Um, we're all about uh, keeping uh, church and separate, uh, church and state separate. Mm. That uh, we are uh, against, we are against uh, institutionalized religious privilege, which that represents, mm. amongst other mm -hmm. things. You know, uh, the fact that uh, you know religious schools are subsidized by. Uh, uh, and given the fact that, uh, you know, the last poll, 25% or 35% of the people in British Columbia identified as irreligious. Um, right. So uh, that should account for something. And so that's what we're, that's part of what we're standing up for. George, you want to weigh in? Also, yeah, I just want to tell you, Dread Pirate, that I will pray for you with all of my heart and soul. <laughs> <laughs> the, the noodly one will listen. Delon slash the man of many names, many mysteries. What do you think about the idea of religious regalia in driver's license? Maybe we should just abolish all of it and just have clean faces. What do you think? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. For the question of uh, uh, what do you, what do we get out of being an atheist? I would say sure. that, you know, for my part, I just don't like, to be fooled, you know, I don't want to fool myself and I definitely don't want anybody to teach me something that is, um, that has no basis or reason for believing it. So really the plus side of being an atheist is, uh, just being genuine, you know, just like anything else. But, uh, for me, it's just being genuine and, uh, you know, um, searching things out for myself, being skeptical. Mm. And this may be more of, I don't know, maybe a value of being a skeptic rather than being an atheist, because I think you have to be a skeptic first. And then that leads me to um, atheism. So just being skeptical, being a healthy skeptic is a big benefit for me, I would say. Cool. Nice. Yeah. I think there's a lot of things you can get. I agree that you get the benefits of skepticism. In my opinion, I feel it's almost like you had it to begin with, or at least the potential to be a skeptical minded person. But then when you become religious, it's taken away from you. And the only thing that you get when you return to atheism is the chance to get it back. Um, I want to throw this up to Dread Pirate. What's up real quick? Well, I just, could you pass me uh, um, <laughs> recording permission? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and Eric, uh, I want to throw this out at you. Uh, one, it's been a while since I've seen you, man. It's good to see you. Uh, yeah. I want to know how the bro ship is going. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, how's the bromance? The, the, uh, uh, do we finally have a house that's been flipped or are we still waiting? Like what's going on? No, no, no. My, my bromance is on hold because, uh, <sighs> cause Chet's, he's, he's real busy. He's actually, this house is coming along nicely. And I think, okay. uh, I think he hopes to get more than he expected out of it. So this is a good thing. I, nice. I just gotta be a little patient and uh, okay. we'll, uh, we'll get back to it. Just everything's been wonky last six do months. We, anyway. Do we have time for the weekly invocation or is that? Absolutely, completely? absolutely. I'm gonna throw it to you, Dredd, but I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna deal into my love for Eric Green for just a little bit more, just real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you know, we had COVID come, you're, you're, you're our teacher. Um, has, have you felt like you finally adjusted and now that we're, we're slowly coming back out of it, how's Kentucky doing as far as like coming back out of the COVID situation? And has your secular outlook helped with any of that at all? Like mm. has praying, have you found help to get rid of any vaccinations or <laughs> help people recover? You're an atheist yeah. that survived the pandemic. That's kind of impressive. Like, right, right. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. So I, I, I do, um, so uh, when this all started, I was teaching remotely through Zoom, but it was only, you know, March, April, May, March and April, really. Um, so it was all kind of shock then. But then the fall started and I haven't had to do anything teaching wise, which which has been great. But UK is opened uh, in Lexington and all of our Fayette County public schools are closed. Mm. And it's kind of a weird, uh, there's, there's something, I don't know if it's political or, or what, but it, there's something at play here because open up the schools moved us into the red. Now uh, we were, we were doing great. We thought in, in at least in Lexington and, you know, college kids, uh, I mean, they can't social distance. Right. So bars right, well, open. So it's just, 
I have such mixed. I got two young children. I'd love for them to be in in-person schools, but it's just that's not a good idea right now. And uh, I think this the UK opening has kind of made it all worse. So it's. Uh, but I mean, how does it tie into atheism and skepticism? I think there's so much, you know, just misinformation and mm. bad information and everything out there. I I feel like I I can trust. I can trust my team a little bit right now, and nice. I, I I don't know maybe maybe that's an echo chamber, but I also feel like, boy, we have kind of a lot of smart people on our side, <laughs> so yeah, I, I feel pretty comfortable there. There's still stuff that I I scratch my head and wonder, you know, yeah. you know, not only but, now but historically, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It, it's I it, I feel comfortable. I feel more comfortable being in a, a place of atheism because I know that this just happened and it wasn't, you know, if you were, if you were a God believer right now, sure. yeah, you'd, you'd have to have a lot of questions for like, why sure. did you do this? And yes. why is it attacking elderly? I mean, what is, why is my friend dead? Yes. Yeah. 200,000 people. In the yeah, United it States. is. It's amazing. That's so, it, you have a way to, you have a way to not just rationalize, but understand the world that's going on around you when you have atheism in your corner, yeah. or at least just a better belief system, or not even a belief system, a lack of a bad belief system mm -hmm. to inform how the world works. George, I want to throw this out to you real quick. How you been doing? You're not stretching anymore this morning. Are you feeling all right? Oh, I will. I will. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> How's everything going with you? How's the New York Oh, I'm Coast? doing fine. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've started physical therapy in the office and all the home people are gone. Okay. My, my, my home health care people are, are out of my life now. Yeah. Including the ones I really liked. Ah, uh, heart's broken now. Yeah. So like, but, but I mean, I'm, I'm doing fine. Yeah. But would you uh, say, okay, your question was uh, what to expect if I'm an atheist, right? Yeah. I want to know. Is that it? Yeah. Well, I don't expect much of anything, to be honest. Yeah, you were um, born atheist, or I, I was, was, but yeah, you were I was raised born, atheist. I was brought up atheist, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've been thinking about the end of life because I'm 78 already. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have that much time left, I don't think. And, and yet, uh, it, it's fine. You know, I'm going to cease to exist, and that's going to be that, and I'm okay with that. Mm. So... Um, I always think there's like a really beautiful romance to the idea of like, if there is an alien civilization of immortals, or if there's a point in where technology becomes, hey, you're going to live forever. Like, they're going to look back at this time and be like, how did people, how did people live day to day knowing they would die? It's like, yeah, you know, um, I just it's do. Thing. I, I just do. <laughs> I don't, I don't think about it. You know, it's just, I exist, you know. Larry, go for it. Well, just one thing that gets me is uh, the average person, even if they're a theist, doesn't have any qualms at all of thinking that every other living thing on the planet dies and that's it. Mm -hmm. But humans, we have to be exception to the rule. We right. have to live forever. Yeah. Uh, you know, in Christianity, you never die whether you go to heaven or hell. You just no. change addresses. And that sounds well, like, yeah, it's a change of address. Yeah. I, I was saying... I was selling that to a friend of mine. Uh, my friend died. Uh, I don't know if it was COVID related or not, but he was a young man. He was like only like 32. And uh, I was telling my friend who, who was my sister, uh, who's um, a Muslim. And she was saying, I'm, I hope he's in a better place. And I wanted to make the point. I was like, no, his better place was when he was with his friends and family who loved him. It's not a change of address. Like Larry would say, um, it's okay to be sad. And I just wanted to let you know that I was, I was down and no dumps for it. And she's like, okay, thank you for putting that. So yeah. Um, anyone else want to feed back in on that? No? Well, I have a question. Hey, go for it. I, which is simply, do religious people really believe, really believe, hmm. that they are ch simply changing their address and going to heaven with all those other trillions of people who have lived before? Yeah. I'd be awful that. crowded up there. I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about the crowds, but yeah, I honestly mm -hmm. believe that when I had it. Yeah. Uh, is well, that similar for everyone else? Yeah. Feel free. Well, yeah, I, as a Jehovah's Witness um, in my past life, we used to think that um, we lived forever on earth. 
mm -hmm. uh, in a paradise. And that was our heaven, so to speak. And we truly believed it. And it was what motivated us to go door to door and spread the news so that others could also live forever if they were only receptive to the message. Right. And um, yeah, it's, it's a strong motivator that that whole thing about living, we all want to live. We don't want to die. Um, but, you know, I think, um, what's kind of helped me after I became an atheist, because that was one of the questions I had very number one question I had was what's in it for me if I become an atheist. Yep. Because now my, my hope for living forever is gone. So what's the point? Mm, Would I rather live? Thing. Yeah. Like, um, would I rather live, um, at least hoping and getting through, you know, like I could never imagine how do people live knowing they're going to die and they'll never see God. They'll never see their loved ones. They'll never breathe again, have an experience and they'll never, you know, enjoy the life that they live, you know, and you, no matter how bad it is, people don't just kill themselves. People want to live no matter how bad it is. So I always wondered what's in it for the atheists. Are these people crazy? What's going on right there? You know, what's your answer now? Yeah. Now well, my answer now is, you know, is, uh, it took a long time. I mean, uh, it sucks. You know, it never is something that people really want to die still. I mean, just not being religious doesn't take that away. There's still that psychological need of wanting to live, but, um, I've kind of come to terms with it and also looking at you know, philosophy of mind and things like that to understand that my ego um, is kind of an illusion already. You know, I'm not really real, so to speak. I'm pretty much a story that I tell myself, like my history, uh, my identity, all of that stuff is kind of an emergent property. It's not something that really exists like a world out there or something like that. So in a way, I never really exist to begin with in a sense. So I never really die, you know, in that way. So that's kind of a way to look at it and just say, you know, so what am I? Well, I'm an experience, you know, I'm, I'm just, um, an observer of my brain and my thoughts and my neurons firing and the world around me that I'm perceiving. Would you mind if I clarify that, that just away, a little bit? Mm -hmm. it's, it sounds like I know you from my experiences with you, from the, t the stories you told me, jokes you told me, times we've had talks, times we had good times, bad times. And even if you aren't physically here, I still have those experiences. I still have the same stories. I still have the same texts. And so yep. it's more of like, yes, you do exist, but you also have a legacy and the legacy will live on. Even if there you, go. you as a human being aren't here. Um, I had a friend who was a Buddhist priest and I used to work with the guy and we used to talk about this subject all the time. And he was a Buddhist priest and he identified himself as an atheist. And we had this discussion about death and life and karma. And he said, you know, the real pure teaching of karma, at least the way he understood it was, you know, if you mistreat people in your life when you're dead, it's still going to suck for them. You know, you've done your damage or you've done your good. You've done what you leave behind, you know, your karma or the things that you've caused other people and other things. And so that is a way of living on in a way is your karma, you know, um, yeah. which is just a fancy word or a traditional word to mean Consequences. Um, cause and effect as far as yeah. his religious teaching was concerned and kind of makes sense. And it goes back to what you just said, you know, you kind of live on through the memories of others and what yeah. you leave in the world. So hopefully I'll leave the world a better place. Yeah. You're here to cater to your own legacy and, right. and that's what lives on past you. And that could be an impressive, amazing thing that can have a lot of positive and causative effects, even moving them forward. Dale, I want to ask you, what are you getting out of X and I'm saying X because I don't know what your religious persuasion is this week. Would you mind filling me in? This week, you, you sound like you're dissing so last, a little bit. Last week you were bright. Uh, what I'm getting out of class? my religious persuasion is this. Okay. Which is called? I've decided I've, uh, tried to encompass the best tried, the best 
highest standard of atheism possible. Okay. And this week, what I've gotten out of it is a sense of uh, community. You mentioned vaccinations earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I've went ahead and volunteered for the uh, for the drug trial, the vaccination trial. So I'm at least trying to contribute in that manner. I don't okay. see any reason why one would not be part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, you also mentioned life after death in heaven. I would recommend anybody watch Michael Shermer's or listen to it. Episode 20 of uh, Science Salon, he discusses in great detail what kind of immortality would occur if it was in heaven or the type of immortalities that we are trying to achieve now what with uh, downloading yourself into a computer, that sort of stuff. Uh, the others, oh yeah, also the JW fellow. Um, I got a call from the JWs and, and uh, they left me their name and their phone number and invited me to call back. So I'm going to do that. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Please record it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested. I'm talking to JW now in myself. Tennessee. Well, my mom's one, Unless so I talk to her know. one at least yeah. multiple times a week. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> it was interesting. What? So you definitely get a lot of things out of religion, but if it is not true, then man, that's a lot of false hope. It's like someone saying, "Hey, man, uh, you have a you have a bunch of imaginary money in the bank account." What, what, why would you want to not believe that? It's just like, right. because it doesn't mean anything. Like I'd rather plus, have an honest bank account. Yeah. than Plus religions don't have a monopoly on hope. You can hope for any kind of afterlife you want. Absolutely. Nobody knows anything about the afterlife. Speaking of that, I know someone who believes in a really awesome afterlife that I have no problem with. Uh, it's our own Dread Pirate Higgs, uh, Beer Volcanoes. What was it? Every Friday's a holiday. Unmute yourself, my friend. And, uh, why don't you weigh in on that and then lead us on our uh, weekly invocation when you have some time. Sure. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, the beer volcano mm -hmm. and uh, the stripper factory. Those, those are things. Uh, <laughs> I, I could pass on the stripper factory, but yeah, I don't even like beer, to well, be honest with you. I just taste. like volcanoes. <laughs> it's El Dante. El Dante. Nice. All right. I have a, I, I have an invocation. And it, and it seems to suit this. Are humans possessed of a soul? with heaven as its object and goal. But if it's not, this life's all we got. It is what we ought to extol. Amen. Very good. Amen. And he writes all these himself. Isn't that great? So uh, what are you getting out of atheism? It seems like you're getting back what was probably taken away from you when you were indoctrinated. And I find like that to be its own value. But if you really just want a list of cool things, maybe you are an awesome religion and maybe that religion's true. Who knows? I can tell you the benefit from atheism is I get to not, I get to have a slightly less bias with the way how I look at the world. And that is particularly in, in situations where there's pandemics or if I have opportunities to help my community by volunteering for vaccination trials, I don't have to bring baggage along that with me. I can have a clear minded outlook. I can have a skeptical outlook and I can use that to benefit the world. Larry, what's up? Yeah, I, I knew one atheist online that says the first thing she said uh, after she de she decided that God wasn't real was I don't have to hate anybody anymore. Mm. And that's kind of funny from coming from religion of supposedly based on love. Yeah. It, it was, it was telling her that she needed to hate homosexuals, yep. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and she didn't have to anymore. There's no dictate that she, she exclude people uh, from her life. Yeah, he Larry, as an, as an atheist, as an organic atheist, I would like for you to explain to me what this hatred is about, because it's not organic to me. Sure. I don't know what you mean. Are you talking about what is, the hate what you, that she was talking about? Yeah, like, yeah what do you mean uh, by Christians yeah. hate things? Well, I, yeah. it says in the Bible that uh, homosexuals are uh, worthy of death, and uh, you should take them to, you know, take them and be stoned, uh, stone them. Um, that I can't think about this right now, but maybe you can. Uh, but there are several uh, types of people, uh, races or whatever, that the Bible has a problem with. And if you're a follower of the Bible, then you 
quote, have to hate them. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, a Christian or somebody who follows the New Testament to the exclusion of the old wouldn't have a lot of that problem. Uh, Jesus didn't say anything about homosexuals. But the New Testament is based on the Old Testament. You can't just throw out the Old Testament. You throw out the Ten Commandments as well. So, you know, it's a problem. Boudreau, what do you think? Yeah, that's that. It ties into something that I was thinking of as you guys were talking, and uh, I know I've heard a lot of uh, tales of Christians that when they've left Christianity and found atheism, they also dropped the political ties to it too, the, the mm. Fox News, kind of that Fox News Christian motif. Mm. And again, it's not, you know, it's not to say all oh, atheists have to be liberal. I mean, not, there are plenty of plenty of spectrum there but there seems to be a group a pretty big tie between a christian fox news watching where they hate gays and they don't want anyone to have abortions and and that whole package and when they leave christianity that that all kind of falls away and seth andrews from the thinking atheist just released a book uh called uh, something to the effect of uh tales from a former fox news christian and he, he really talks about how that hatred fell away when, uh, when he left. Because, I mean, he just, all of it just, just dropped. And it was so easy for him to see, you know, that it was all lies and, and hate. And I don't right. know. Yeah. Just to add a little bit to what Larry was saying. Yeah. There's a lot of parts in the Bible that are explicitly racist. Like, there's a very much a us, we are the chosen group, mm -hmm. and these aren't Romans, Samaritans, Jews. These people are dirty and bad. And, oh, we found one good Samaritan. We'll make a story about that. But the rest of them <laughs> are <laughs> terrible people. And yeah. that's not even touching what it says about slavery and what it, ha, ha, the cast that it comes up with, with regard to you're good people. You're, you are the same breed of us, but you're on a lower level. So mm -hmm. those kinds of mentalities, when they're carried in your holy book, can very easily be indoctrinated into the people who have them. And it makes people be like, oh, we're the Third Street Baptist Church. We don't have to deal with the Fourth Street Baptist Church like animals. What's going on here? Also, Christianity media, like what Boudreaux was saying, it's kind of like a magic trick. Like once you see the trick and understand what it is, you just, you find nothing about it palatable anymore. And you drop it like Fox News and, and the 700 Club and Christian radio stations. Even though they have jams, you're just like, I can't stick with this anymore. That fire, it sounded like you want to add in. Go for it. I, uh, I was going to say, I, I think the um, uh, one thing I became open to when I became an atheist was doing an internal critique of the Bible and different teachings or interpretations of the Bible because there is kind of a dissonance there. Uh, when you look at the flood of Noah, you know, Jehovah God is drowning babies. Mm. And, you know, the Amalekites, um, their infants were to be torn apart, you know, for the evil sins of their fathers, you know, and um, th these things are not very merciful and loving. And I don't see how infants are responsible for the sins of their father. And you kind of ignore those type of things when you're a Christian in it. And you just focus, you start cherry picking and you focus on the New Testament and Jesus is all loving and, you know, it's all mercy and no justice at that point. And, you know, you forget about all these other stories, but once you come out of it, all of a sudden I noticed myself back then really focusing in on those really bad scriptures, the really quote unquote bad stuff. And I think that was one positive thing I could say is I became more uh, real with it, you know, hmm. and accept and embrace that, hey, this is an old Bronze Age notion of morality and ethics that just doesn't find a place in today's world. Right. Yeah. Our cultures evolved too much. Dell, you want to weigh in? Yes. I was uh, about the hate dropping away. I'd like to comment that. There's a documentary called The Brainwashing of My Father. It involves uh, a, this daughter's uh, experience with her father watching Fox News. And uh, there was a number of people that said that when they stopped watching <clears throat> Fox News, that they did notice that hate and animosity went away. It's uh, quite obvious that Fox News is trying to, uh, to uh, perpetuate that sort of thing because as 
hate is more powerful than love. Oh, that's, that's all I got to say a, about that. That's a great job. You know, I, I'll just throw this in. Uh, they're not, there didn't always used to be 24 hour news channels. So we're not just lambasting Fox news. I'm, I'm, I'm lambasting the idea of there's news 24 hours a day and a talking head that has to tell you things and sell dog food immediately afterwards. Right. Um, I think that was Ted Turner's invention or his son's invention where he's like, Hey, we're just going to have a couple of channels that CNN that just do news all day long. And we're going to make sure that we use the same advertising techniques and tricks to keep viewers engaged. And we found that it's a lot easier to keep people engaged when we give them a huge headline and don't tell them any of the information, but maybe mislead them a little bit or just tantalize them with some facts. And now we're at the point where there's multiple channels doing that and everyone's just trying to get your attention. And it makes essentially the entire concept of trying to stay informed about your surroundings a very taxing and exhausting endeavor because you have people who don't want to tell you the thing that happened, but want to keep your attention with any sort of <laughs> provocative news possible. It's crazy. Dale, what's up? Yeah. yeah, Fox News is different. Fox News literally uses hate and anger. There's no doubt about that with mm -hmm. Hannity, O'Reilly, and all of those, just like Alex Jones does. When you see the commentator getting all upset and red-faced, that sort of anger actually induces the release of uh, epi the flight-or-fight response in you. It releases yeah. endorphins. Yeah. Now, it is an actual, literal, visual addiction. Mm, a visual that's addiction. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, I like oh. the way how Dale's mm. mic dropping at the end of all this stuff. Visual <laughs> telecommunications. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, Larry, we're at the bottom of the half hour. Why don't we take us out and we'll come right back after. Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. I'm Doubter 5 on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today, Sunday, September 27th, 2020. Uh, let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. We have over a thousand members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can go to Meetup and search for Knoxville Atheists. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group, group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. <laughs> That's right. Start one. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about Knoxville's Atheist Call-In TV show. Uh, it was a TV show for about 10 years. Now it's gone online. Go to YouTube and search for Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville to find their new versions of their new videos. Or you can look for the archives of the 10 years that they did on public access TV by looking for Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Also, if you're interested in getting involved with the TV or the radio show, just come to an Ask Meetup or RET meeting and talk to us about it. You could be our next co-host or guest. With us on the show, we have the Wombat. We hey, have, um, freedom! Jordan, uh, Boudreaux, uh, Judd Pirate Higgs, and Red Leader. Uh, we were talking about life after We were talking about Star Wars. Basically. No, no, we had a really great conversation about Star Wars. Oh. Uh, through the full first half. And I think one of the most iconic scenes Star is like, Wars. yeah, like when Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader were fighting each other in like the Death Star and like Darth Vader's looking down at Luke and he's like, there was something that Obi-Wan never told you. Luke, where is the love? Uh, where where is, is the love? The love, the love. Where the love. love. Um, the CIA, the Crips, <laughs> and the Bloods, and the KKK. Hey, nice. <laughs> we got uh, some great listener feedback that I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, first one's from, we got shout outs to Larry, Dread Pirate, and George oh. on this one. Yo. Uh, that's what I love this the most. So Pixel917 says, hey, shout out to the audio podcast. Larry sends us the audio every week and we put it in the rss feed you can subscribe to digital free thought radio hour on most podcast searching services yep. 
very cool remember digital free thought radio hour nice uh this one goes out to george all right so he's it's from our own our old friend nathan matthews uh repeat commenter on the show thank you so much for your support nathan he says concerning the feedback on secular groups with congregations i think he made some really great points there are clearly benefits to this structure explaining their prevalence and explaining uh there's clearly benefits to the structure of congregations, even for secular groups, and that would explain their prevalence. I'm going to give it a shot. I think it's time to make some new friends. And sorry, George, my local ethical society is in Missouri, not New York. It's a branch of the same name, though, or the same ethical culture tree. <laughs> so says Nathan. Very cool. And uh, also a comment from, I don't eat my friends. This one goes out to Dread Pirate. Um, question, do you have any advice on how to approach someone when they are factually wrong? For example, someone says, we eat bacon to get fiber. Science says so. Of course, I could easily show them an article about the lack of fiber and bacon, but is there a better way or a more epistemological approach to addressing things like that? I think I think an SE conversation over bacon and its fiber content would be awesome. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> I'm down for that. Great. What would be your approach? I would I would wonder about that because there is that knee-jerk reaction of like, no, you're wrong. Let me just look this up. Like, you don't necessarily well, want to attack the conclusion, right? I think the first uh, the first thing I'd be interested in is, is you know, trying to, uh, uh, you know, um, determine how sound the source is. So mm. where, where are they, you know, what are they relying on uh, to get their information? And, and does that have some spillover into other aspects? of their life so if they're watching fox news and fox news is selling the idea that there's lots of fiber and bacon well maybe we examine that and, and, and determine whether or not that's a reliable source of information okay i i'm going to throw this question out to other people too who've done sc uh our own scott and eric and maybe even larry too but i'll throw out my approach whenever someone says science says so and i know in my head as a scientist no i i always ask the clarification question of what do you mean by that which is a really great open-ended question because oftentimes people will say science says this when what they really mean is a couple of scientists have said this right. and there's a very big difference between scientists saying something and science saying something because mm -hmm. you know just my just my point and that's enough to let them think about stuff like that scott we're going to throw this at uh, you first how would you respond to someone saying we eat bacon to get fiber science says so yeah i'd be like um well i'd you know, first I'd try to establish like how confident they were about the claim. And um, I would at, pretty much ask them, what would it take to change your mind? Um, what kind of information would make you uh, lose confidence mm. in that? Um, possibly, like you were saying, um, you said science. What do you mean by that? Um, is this just one scientist or is this... Uh, the um you know the is this all of science or how did you come about to them maybe then and then ask them what would it take to would other science that contradict or your confidence what is it you know these are all really great questions oh no did i lose my connection and uh, see what they come back with. But I think both of your answers are certainly valid and what, and what uh, would be a good way to prove. Yeah. No. Go forward. Welcome back, Ty. Hey, welcome back. I think my cat's playing with my Wi-Fi router. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought you were just deep in thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eric, uh, yeah, when everyone's frozen, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, should I stay quiet or should I be like, help, 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 help? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to pray that too? Eric, I want to know, because you've done SE with me, especially when we went out to uh, the protests of the Ark Museum way, oh, yeah. way, way, way back when. And we had that beautiful setup. We even saw Seth Andrews, I believe, and it was a good, we did. good time. We saw Aaron Ra. We did interviews with him. It was great. Yeah. Um, if someone sat at our table and said, hey, I believe bacon has fiber, science says so, like, I want to believe in that too. <laughs> yeah. But how, how, would you, how would you address that? That'd be great. Yeah, it would well, be wonderful. I, mean, I, I think I would just agree with him and say, let's just assume it has a fiber and then wait for someone to prove us wrong. I mean, come on. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, no I, you know, that's maybe to take... <laughs> to take a different approach, uh, since I'm not as, uh, my SE tools aren't as sharp as your guys. Uh, what if you just said, all right, let's do this. Uh, let's 
you know, eat a, a insane amount of bacon all, all week and just see, you know, what our constitution schedule is like. And then the next week, let's eat a bunch of apples or a bunch of things that, you know, other science says has fiber. And let's just see the difference. Like, hey. see how regular you are. And, and You're asking? Maybe use... I like apple flavored bacon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, that they probably has apple, fiber. apple smoke flavor. Yeah. I was saying, like, uh, it's a great thing to ask how can we test that? It's a yeah. great open ended question. It's, a, it's one of those things where you don't have to set up a whole bunch of different flow charts. You could ask, like, what do you mean by that? See what they say? Or how can we you test could it? Go to the pack, we test you could go to the package and look for the fiber content. Mm, now, that's that would be... Uh, it's so, pretty empirical. Yeah, It's empirical, but it also brings up the, oh, you can bring stuff to the table? Well, let me bring four different articles that say nutritional facts are wrong to the table. Like, you want to try not to bring evidence to the table. Think about that yes, methodology they're using. Just ask about the method, because typically, if you waiver that, you're good. But you could always bring paperwork and have, like, a legal battle. But you're just well, reading like... Reading the label is, is methodology. <laughs> uh, but it also directly challenges their conclusion. And you're going to make them be like, oh, well, if that says I'm wrong, I got four things yeah. that say I'm right. And you don't want to have that in an, an SC conversation. Yeah. You really want to think about, like, is your reasoning for this valid or not? And you can have that conversation. You don't need paperwork or evidence. And by the time you're coming in with a case full of evidence to prove someone might be incorrect, yeah. you're already working too yeah. hard in SC. <laughs> you're probably not doing SC at all. <laughs> Consider you know, that. Larry. It, oh, sorry. Consider that could be Go as ahead. easy as just asking, what do you mean by that? And how can we test that? And, and if you don't get a reasonable, reliable answer, you don't have to believe them by default. Or you don't, they, and they should realize, oh, I don't have a good way of testing that. And I don't know what I mean by that. That's a problem I need That's to work That's probably on. where I fail in SE all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you got to just let it flow like water, baby. Eric, what were you going to say? Well, just kind of interesting because my, my wife works in label review where she literally reviews labels on packages for, for pet food mostly. But it's my understanding the way the process works is the company puts whatever they want on the label. So the company decides they want to say now with 100% fiber, th they can do that. And then mm. the label gets reviewed and the scientists review the labels and decide whether or not they're allowed to make those claims. So mm -hmm. you're just introducing another scientist if you, if you point to the label. Yeah, it can get murky. There's a really yeah. simple approach, which is just like, what do you mean by that? How can we test that? And is there a, a room for you to consider what it would look like if you're wrong? Boom, 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 boom that does marvelous things to someone's thinking process because that's all you're trying to make them do. Think critically on their own, not think for them and bring the evidence that they should be looking at themselves. Right. You want them to do that thinking and you can do it as teach simple the, as teach them how to fish, fish, right? Teach them how to fish, figure out like, Hey, am I being reasonable? Do I have a good way to test that? Should I trust this? Is this actually science? Really great comments all around. Maybe we'll throw this out to George. If someone told you, Hey, bacon has a lot of fiber and it's science says so. How would you respond to that, George? Uh, I'm, I have a feeling I'm not very good at this. Forget about it. Um, <laughs> because uh, I was remembering a conversation I had recently with somebody where they made a claim that I knew was false. Mm. And I said, where do you get your information from? He said, it's, in, it's on Facebook. It's true. <laughs> Has to be. It's on the Internet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I... I Knee jerk responded to him. I said, ah, Well, Facebook is full of crap. You know? <laughs> I, I appreciate you sensing yourself there. That was really great. Well, it wasn't quite the right thing to say, I think, mm. but I, I'm not sure I know what the right thing to say was. How did you figure that out? And they say, Facebook's like, Is that a reliable source of information? Is there any chance that that could be wrong? Like, you can just yeah. ask really, really simple clarification questions, speculative questions about the nature of how they figure out stuff. If Facebook is right 100% of the time, then I'll believe whatever Facebook says. But is Facebook right 100% of the time? Is there any information that we can find on Facebook that's not true? Yeah, sure. It's like, okay, and how confident are you about this? 100%. Even though we know Facebook is 100% accurate, okay, well, fine, I'm 80%, Tyrone. It's like, great, you can walk yourself down. Like, you built the momentum yourself, but you thought through that yourself. And that's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, Dell, throwing this out at you, is this question entertaining to you whatsoever? If not, you're free to move on. But if someone said, bacon has fiber, science says so, how would you respond? I think I'd find it as a good opportunity to um, start explaining the way science works as opposed Ooh. to getting that one little issue. For example, Fox News wants to look at both sides of the issue. 
if there's a thousand scientists on one side and two scientists on the other side disagreeing about climate change, then the problem, then it is not uh, equitable to look at both sides of the issue as if they are equal, which is one of the things Fox News does. So it might be a good opportunity to start talking with the individual about how many times people lie to them every day. And, and it's not only Fox works. News, a lot of outlets. That's around. all I got to say about that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I do like how science is not a popularity contest. And there was a time where there probably was just one scientist saying, hey, I think climate change is happening. We should probably work on this. And everyone else was like, nerd. So like some situations, you may have one scientist versus the world who's like, hey, I think the world's around. Hey, I think there are these things called germs. We would probably should try cleaning our hands if we're delivering babies. Hey, I think plate tectonics is a thing because I feel two inches, my home is two inches more to the left than it was <laughs> <laughs> after that really big earthquake. I think there's something going on here, guys. Um, the methodology well, think... matters more than the number of people who promote it. And we need to focus on that methodology, not the number, but the methodology, which is what science is. Hey, what do you think, Joe? Uh, sure. oh, Scott. Sorry. George mm -hmm. first, then we'll go to Scott. Sorry. My bad. Bad hosting. Tyron. Um, I'm trying to remember what I wanted to say. Uh, uh, I think that there is a trend right now toward mistrust and discounting of science altogether oh, absolutely. and experts. In the event and that it doesn't so say what you want it to say. Because when science agrees with what your overall claim well, is, everyone wants to. You know, to I was thinking of having this conversation with a certain person, and um, uh, what I was going to say to him in my mind is, you know when you had those stents put in your arteries? Did you go to your car mechanic to have it done because he was cheaper? Or did you go to a doctor? Mm. And why? You know, what? Mm -hmm. Huh? And why? And why? And why? Yeah, yeah. So your yeah. your doctor is is educated in science. He's, um, you know, we got a battle with the anti intellectual wave that's been going around. Dale, I have you weigh on. Yeah. That. See, I'm see, I I think we have to deal with the emotion. Mm. You know, we're 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 trying logic all the time, and for in in our atheism, a lot of us are uh, using logic to refute the other viewpoint that we were indoctrinated in. And uh, I, I'm aware right now that logic is not where a lot of people live. They're, they're living in a space of, of emotion, of fear, of, mm -hmm. you know, hatred, of lo love, they think. Um, and, and, and I think um, we're, we're in a period when this is on the ascendance. Mm. But we so how do we it. deal with, well, how do we, how do we deal with that? How, I, don't know. How, I don't know the answer. I don't know is a great place to start because it's the least biased place, but uh, one of it just comes from being willing to talk about these matters in an open way. Because when people don't wanna talk about the benefits of education and learning and critical thinking, ignorance wins because ignorance survives in darkness. Yeah. Dale, I will throw this out at you. You were gonna say something. I don't want you to forget. Yes, uh, you're, uh, George just spark this idea of distrust of science. Mm. The U.S. Department of Agriculture are the ones who spearheaded that polio uh, vaccination thing we had. Uh, but they, they have consisted of about 700 scientists, and they have about 90 percent, excuse me, 270 or so, about 90 percent of them have been fired, have been given the choice of re relocating or quitting or finding other job and it's, it's amounting to about 90 80 percent of them are actually being fired from the usda also the department of cavuto the department of health and human services spokesman who has no training whatsoever in medicine or science is making uh, is is making the statements that the fda the cdc is putting out so if our leaders are not as a matter of fact, one of our politicians said, I don't trust science. 
it's mm. going to get warmer or, or uh. cooler. Uh, I don't trust science. You don't have to wear a mask. When you have your leader saying something like that, then you must be a little bit sympathetic to the guy who thinks that he, you know, that bacon has uh, protein. Uh, excuse me, um, fiber, uh, fiber. Uh, fiber, carbohydrate. That's all I got to say. That's all he's got to say. Delon, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, man of many mysteries and names. What, what do you think about anti-intellectualism? And is it getting worse in this country? Is it getting better? What's your opinion on this? It seems to me that it's getting worse because of the uh, lack of trust in science and institutions that, that are uh, anchored in intellectualism. So... And I think part of that is because people give into their credulity so much. It's like um, the scientific method is to actually get past, you know, our biases and our um, person. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he still there? I think we lost him. Yeah, he froze. I'll just follow on to this point. Like there is, there is that culture where you know, as fewer people um then we've benefited but a lot but today you know everybody's kind of forgetting about that and they kind of want to believe what they want to believe and they form um echo chambers and support and people are um, driven by their emotions and what they feel and what they what makes sense to them this doesn't make sense you know right. but right. i think neil degrasse tyson said something like um the universe like signed no obligation to make sense to anybody exactly yeah 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 <laughs> you know the hardest thing about getting smart is you have to recognize where you're dumb because you yep. can't fill in holes if you are blindly pouring cement right you don't you know to. what you don't know you don't yep. know what you don't know. And sometimes you need someone to tell you, you don't know this. I'm going to teach it to you. Get ready for it. <laughs> and well, so I think Fox does like a that. very good job of that. <laughs> Dread, <laughs> what do you does? think about the idea of like, hey, you have to get, you have to recognize you're dumb to get smart. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I, I, I think it, uh, I was going to make the point that um, uh, teaching critical thinking, I think is the, uh, probably one of the best cures for, um, for bad thinking, right? Uh, you know, if uh, people can learn to evaluate the evidence, uh, you know, based on, on how likely it is to be true um, and have that, that, uh, that toolkit for, for critical thinking, then that is the guard against uh, all this uh, anti-intellectualism. Yeah. Eric, I'll throw it there, out to you. There's my mic. <laughs> nice, I nice. I heard George say something that uh, I didn't hear who you said does a good job of this. I said Fox News does a very good job of telling people what to think, you know. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think they're like we've sort of stumbled on here and there today is that they're, they're doing this on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. There is a gut punch involved in this. We're in a world where where this is reality more and more, I think. Mm. So what it made me think of uh, when we're, we're, we're saying uh, this distrust in, in science and facts, um, do, you, do you guys remember, am I alone in this, that Snopes used to be like the go-to place, like, yeah. boom, oh, mm -hmm. here's Snopes, yeah. clear this up, and people are like, oh, mm -hmm. man, wow, I guess Mr. Ed wasn't a zebra. After all, that's, that's amazing. But now it seems like Snopes is like a joke. It's like if yeah. someone puts a Snopes link, they're like pff, liberal media bias. Right. You so know, the truth is a liberal media bias. Right. Wikipedia, and, a liberal bias. And now it's yeah. like Snopes doesn't even work anymore. It's like that. It used to be like the perfect conversation ender. But it's uh, not anymore. <laughs> and there's not. Guess what it is. It's going to be critical thinking at the end of every day. And there's no shortcuts to critical thought aside from doing yeah. it. And right. that's how you get better at it. And you can start to look at Snopes and be like, I think some of these articles aren't coming from a factual or reasonable point of view. Um, I did want to make uh, one last mention about getting smart. Um, if you're stronger than someone, it's a pretty obvious thing. You, you might be thicker, you might have more bulges on your body and people are like, that guy's stronger than me, I'm not gonna get in a fight with him. If you're faster than someone, you, you, you probably won't get caught. <laughs> you might have a body type that shows that too. And 
if you're richer than someone, it's like, well, he has a fancier car than me. That makes sense. He's richer. I'm willing to accept all these things. But if you're smarter than someone, that's the thing. That's the last thing someone's willing to accept. <laughs> They're like, he, but he's not smarter than me. He's got four PhDs. Well, I know how to disconnect my bidet in my bathroom. I did that in like a half hour. Can he do that? <laughs> I, I can grow a weird facial hair thing. Can he do that? People, because the idea of getting smart is you have to be vulnerable to new information and you have to be willing to accept that and allow that to supplant things that you may have already believed ahead of time and become very, very comfortable with the idea of, I don't know this, I have to work hard to, to know it. And it's not something that shows in your body, it's something that shows in your intellect, your, your behavior, your conduct, how, your character. And these are things that we can ascertain in like a quick glance at a person. And because of that, the idea of like an intellectual is like this weird, scary, mystical thing that a lot of people are more willing to reject than accept because it seems like such a arduous task for them to take on themselves. But I highly recommend it because if I can do it, anyone can. I think like if anyone can get to the point where it's like, hey, I wanna know this, I have to recognize that I don't really know that much about it. I wanna open up a book or maybe have someone tell me about it and learn more. Yesterday I was playing guitar with a friend of mine. We, I've been playing guitar for five years and I didn't realize that you're supposed to mute certain strings when you're playing open chords. I had no idea about that. And Eric's like, what? That makes no sense. But in my head, I was like, I'm just playing the chord. I don't know how this works. And I could or have been haughty. play those strings. Yeah. Right, right. And I could have been haughty and be like, don't tell me how to play guitar. I've been playing this thing for many, many years. I know exactly what I'm doing. I have lots of songs. I have things on Spotify, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, no. Thank you for telling me this because this is only going to make me a better person and make me better play. You need to have that kind of attitude when it comes to learning. And that is a character um, ref reflection on character. And there's no substitute for that. And I can tell you, because I'm an atheist, it's a lot easier for me to shed the baggage of the religious right that I have on things. Like, well, God's on my side. <laughs> I could just say, hey, I don't know what kind of gods are out there. I'm just going to do what's best for the mutual benefit of everyone. Um, that takes us close towards our end. I want to do a quick roll call. Does anyone have anything they'd like to plug? We'll start with Dread Pirate Higgs. No, you got the coolest thing. We're going to save you for later on. George, was there a album, a book, friends that you want to shout out to, a really cool neighbor that you have <laughs> that you get along with? Anything you want to shout out? <laughs> I can't think of a single thing. Fair it's enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Be well, and I'll hope to see you next week. Um, Scott, slash Dylan slash Williamson slash Scott Doubtfire. What do you got to plug? Um, I guess I could shamelessly plug my, my music stuff. I do it. Have a sound do cloud. it. Do it. Yeah. Look for, um, dub shine on SoundCloud. Dub shine on so, SoundCloud. I'm checking that out. I'm already yeah. writing it down. What kind yeah. of music do you make? It's, um, electronic music, different genres of electronic music, some mellow, some fast up tempo, different stuff. Very cool. I also throw this out another musical thing. So I went out to a friend's place to play guitar with him. He's a Christian. And I'm like, do you know any easy songs? And I'm like, I know a bunch of Christian songs. <laughs> and we played through those, even though he knows I'm an atheist. Cause I, for me, it's no baggage if it was like a, 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 a Islamic guitar song or a Christian pop rock song. Cause for me, it's just music. And mm -hmm. so like, if, if I can, you know, just appreciate, being with someone and playing music with them, that gives me more freedom than someone who's like, well, I can't play that song because that goes against my religion. It's like, it's music, baby. All right, Eric. Compromise. Yeah. Play Cat Stevens. <laughs> cool. Eric, is there anything that you'd uh, promote or uh, plug? I, yeah, uh, uh, two quick things. Because uh, this one, I, can't, you know, I keep promising you guys stuff and then I don't deliver. So I'm, we're going to deliver this one. Uh, I've met up with some friends on a Facebook page for my favorite band of all time, Bad Religion, which oh, is was... pretty, pretty topical for this group. Uh, Bad Religion has been a, a band since the 80s and they put a book out recently. It was just fantastic. If you like the band, love the book. Um, I've met up with these guys on Facebook and we are going to record a Bad Religion cover. Uh, we're going to do Infected. Um, I'm going to play drums on it. So cool. um, I'm actually going to lay down the tracks today and hope to nice. uh, put that out in a, in a bit. And then I got to plug my buddy's book here. Larry, this is fantastic. And I'm reading this thank book you, and you. I get to the part where you got to talk about the things that should have been in the Bible. Uh -huh. And th that was a beautiful section, by the way. 
I, I, you were reading my mind because I've said at Summit before, maybe even when Ty was there, I mm. said, why didn't they give you the ingredients to soap in the Bible? It could have saved <laughs> yeah. so many lives. Yeah. Just, you know, just put it in there. Yeah. Like, here. yeah. That and contraception for crying out loud. And, and, and yeah, sure. Yeah, because there's enough people already, right? Hey, like, hey. <laughs> All right. And, and what temperature to cook a pork to? <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, because bacon yeah. is delicious. Hey, and, you know what? I even throw. Oh, I don't want to start that argument again. Dale, uh, is there anything that you'd like to plug? I like that statue in the background. You're a really, really good sculptor. If that was here. Yeah. Oh, he's on mute, but he's he's looking through stuff and he's talking. I can hear you too. <laughs> there you go. There you no. Go. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, that is a really cute sketch statue in the background, though. Uh, does it have a name? It's actually called the Dying Gaul. It was first done in around uh, 1020 BC, or excuse me, AD. It was uh, to. Uh, it was actually one of the first war protest pieces of art. Mm. Cool. Very, cool. very nice. All right. Dread, um, I gave you this time. I am. W w you have all of our love and support for what you are going to do tomorrow. Um, just Thank you. Know you have our backing. Yeah. Um, I I do have. Uh, I've made contact and been keeping contact with uh, the major provincial newspaper. Um, mm -hmm. So he's going to be interested in the outcome of this story as well. So if it comes in my favor uh, or in the favor of pastafarians everywhere. Um, I will be celebrating long and loud, and uh, will definitely share out with you guys on on either way, either either way it turns out. But well, let me hopefully, it's going to be a, a good one. And worst case scenario, just tattoo a hat on your head and be like, "Well, now what are you going to do?" <laughs> <laughs> now exactly. A little tricorn. Uh, just here. just, like, to, just to mention too uh, that I do have my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, uh, P Y R E T E. So I will uh, once this is up, uploaded or whatever turned into a recording I'll, I'll post it on my channel nice wonderful all right and you can find me at let's chat feel free to leave comments on that channel and we'll go over them in the next week's episode likewise we also have a subreddit group r slash street epistemology feel free to comment on that and we'll go over them on the show too thank you so much for all the love guys i'm uh, looking forward to talking to you again next week larry sure. why don't you take us out this has been Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Please visit our digitalfreethought.com for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, my book uh, is called Atheism, What's It All About? You wrote a book? You can find it, it's, you can find it on Amazon. <laughs> Dale's book is, can be found and read free on online Jesus did it.com and, and talking about how he did his miracles as a reminder uh, cosmos series three is now on tv the third series of the cosmos and it's on national cool. geographic do a search That's for cool. it yeah broadcasting now if you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind there's an organization for you called recovering from religion.org check it out if you have questions for the show you can send them to ask an atheist at knox atheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like and subscribe remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heaven and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it and enjoy your life we'll see you next wednesday see you later bye-bye bye guys see you later